everybody, I am Cinnamon Cooney, your archer, and I'm so excited to show you how you can go from this to this with just a little bit of information, tips, tricks, and knowing the materials. So get your paint, get your brushes, and I'm gonna show you how you can get better today at painting clouds. So let's look at the colors we use to create one of these gorgeous, colorful skies we all love so much. So over here, I have a dark purple, I have white, I have blue, I have a magenta, I have a yellow, I have a warm orange red, I have a brown, and I have what is called gloss glazing liquid. For the exact colors that I used, check the description below. All right, so I'm going to grab a brush for acrylic painting. I'm going to get, this is a number 12 bright. Okay, brights are nice and firm. This is synthetic filaments. I'm gonna get this wet and drag off the extra moisture that I'm going to have. And I'm gonna start with my sky color. I'm gonna get a little of my brown just on the edge of my bristles. And I'm gonna come over to this blue. This is an ultramarine blue. And the brown is going to make a kind of nice, cool, gray sky. When I pull this into my white, it's going to feel like, I'm gonna grab some glazing liquid. Those skies that you look up that you see are bright and cool. So I'm gonna come over here and I'm going to go just back and forth, painting this grayed yet still blue sky coming down. Let's do this, all right? There's painting this coming down. Get your brush. A lot of landscape artists like ultramarine because it does this type of natural looking sky. And sometimes we have a tendency to want to over brighten our skies, especially if we're looking at a bright sunset like this. I've just added some water. This is to thin my heavy body paint. And you'll notice that I'm adding white every time I go into the mix and not really rinsing out my brush. When I'm down here on this lower third, I'm going to start implying my purple cloud bank. I just wanna make sure that I'll have a nice layer from here to here. And so how I'm going to do that is I'm gonna just take this brush into the purple that I have, get a smidge of your magenta, okay? I'm gonna add my glazing gloss. This is gonna slow down the drying time of my paint and allow me to blend easily. This is the underpainting of the sky. See that there, isn't that nice? There we go. nice soft right here my brush gets real light and I just drag the bristles lightly over it and it creates a very blended effect so even though I don't have oils I'm still getting that really blended effect now and this is important it is a good time to rinse out your brush and dry your painting I'm gonna hair dry mine or you can just let yours hair dry either is fine Okay, once your canvas is dry, you can start the next layer of your clouds. And this is gonna be the distant atmospheric clouds that are far off in these pictures. So this is really fun. I'm going to get another bright. This is a number four bright Cambridge. This is natural bristles with a mix of synthetic. And that's gonna stop this from over softening. I'm gonna get it just a little bit wet, but I'm gonna dry this off on my towel because this can pull in too much water. I'm gonna do an interesting thing here. I'm gonna pull out a little of my ultramarine and my quinacridone here. Now, once you have that right there, pull out your white. You're gonna see you're gonna get this sort of dusty purple color. You see that right there, how that is on the brush? Come over here and you're gonna do the lightest, softest upsweep. This is called dry brushing. What dry brushing means is that you don't have a lot of water on the brush. 
Notice that I'm dusting this color lightly up. So let's take some of these far off distant cloud events here. I'm going to get a little more white. Notice no water on my brush. And I'm going to be doing this curve to about, if you divided this in half mentally, to the middle point. Just softly. You can really do this. I mean, think about this. Can you lightly dust this? Yes, you can. You totally can. Just don't press hard. Here, I'm going to show you. Throw your arm into the canvas where your brush would look like that. That would be too hard. You want to be just on the tip there. So just lightly dusting. And then when we get to this point, I'm going to come get a little of my darker color. And I'm going to just switch to a soft horizontal stroke. Now I'm pressing a little harder into the canvas, back and forth, creating a very distant cloud. So that's a lot of atmospheric perspective that we're creating. Get a little more color if you need it. And make sure you have enough of these distant stratas. You can also get some glaze if you want to. And put some blended ones up here. So you can just feel how that's like faraway clouds. Next in building clouds, we want to build the body of the cloud, which often we kind of get confused on the color when actually we need to be doing something more gray than we think. So the basis of our cloud that you see here, right, is purple, but it's grayed out a little bit by like a very bright red. So this red here is cad red light, and when you add it to the purple, it warms it up, but it also grays it out. So you can see I'm swirling around checking that out. I've got my brush, it's still dry. And I'm going to come here and I'm making soft, light, dusty marks. Remember, you can even get fingers in there to alter a mark if you need to. Like if I put a little glaze on here and I want to use my finger to blend, I can sit there and do that. What I'm trying to do is create little bits of random, airy effect in deep shadow. Clouds reflect the light that they're in. Taking a little of my glazing medium. Just making sure that using my finger where I need to. Don't feel afraid to touch your canvas. What you're wanting to do is make your edges kind of crazy and even. I'm going to take a little puff. I'm going to imagine a wind bank bringing this up. I'm going to puff up a little bit. You like that? This kind of scrumbly brush stroke is actually called scumbling. And where I want it to be lighter, you know, I can get my finger involved and get some glazing medium. Just go ahead and be like, no. You can be light and soft, so don't feel like you can't use your fingers. Some of the best cloud artists in the world are big finger painters. All right, loading up. And I'm bringing the body of this dark bank all the way down into here. I'm going to create a plateau. So I'm going to load up my brush. If you need more paint, get a little of your purple, get a little of this orange red. The way these colors interact together, that's what grays it out. I'm going to create a plateau bank to build on these cumulus. I'm going to make this line kind of uneven now. If you have to, soften it. See, I'm softening it. Go ahead and just get this in. Glazing medium. I like glazing medium with acrylics, and I think it's helpful because it allows you to do some different types of blending. I think it's worthwhile to have in your artist kit. All right. Just letting this, see this brush just lets me really push my paint around the canvas. You know, you can push anything up here if you need to, little bits that have escaped the main body of the bank. Right? As I'm going through, I've got this color here, get a little white. 
Now the light source on this painting and, and clouds, everything's light source is coming from here and that's why all these tops are lit. So you're going to want to, in this distant bank, light up some of the tops of this. And then like maybe this part of the cloud here got lit up and so you're looking for the edges that are catching the light. Let's push a little bit of light that's happening there. Get a little more white. Maybe a little bit of light's happening there. Light up your cloud banks. Come here in the middle. See how we're just softly pushing this along. This could have a little light at the top surface. Even this can have a little light at the top surface. Don't feel like it can't because it can. Little, little bits of light in your cloud. I am trying not to make consistent or rigid shapes. I'm just trying to be very relaxed in what I'm doing. And so now I have deep tones, deep values. This isn't just one shape. This is very deep. I'm going to wipe off my brush. But interestingly enough, I don't want all the purple out of it because even as I come here, I'm going to get a little of the magenta. I'm going to mix it into this orange with the purple mixture on my brush. I'm going to come here into this cloud and I'm going to create some of these warm highlights in my cloud. Again, I'm thinking about where the light could be hitting. Just a little bit here. Always be thinking about where's the light hitting. And there's just a good bit here. I'm going to pull some right under here. This is going to be some of that orange glow right under here. And now I'm going to be seeing some new body of the next layer of this gorgeous column of orange. See, what happens is over here is that we kind of see the colors and our brain is talking to us about them, but we don't realize all the layers that might go into creating those vibrant, dramatic sky effects. I'm going to get some more of my red on here. You know, let's, uh, let's build a little bank that maybe layers up and is just red here. And it's going to just scumble, scumble. Right. Scumble, scumbling this whole space. I don't want to lose all my purple, so I'm going to come back with some purple right here. Some deep color. And if you start to lose your shadows in your clouds, you can always put them back. Because clouds have shadows and highlights. Now I'm going to get into my red. You know, I can do a little yellow, get some yellow in there. It won't feel bright on your palette and it's so strange when it gets on your canvas it's going to look so bright. Just uh, show a little bit of that warmth. It's maybe happening through here. You can get a little of your purple. Create some deep violet shadows in through this bank. See, I'm squiggling back and forth. Back and forth. Breaking that up. I'm not doing big circles. I'm looking for random shapes and I'm putting together the puzzle piece of what I'm painting with. And that is going to help me. I'm going to rinse out my brush. And I'm going to build this bank. And I'm going to get a bigger bright. This is a number eight bright Cambridge. Again, it's a mix of the synthetic and bristle. If I get it wet, I'm going to make sure that I pull off some of the water. I'm going to take a little of my ultramarine into my purple for this bank. This bank will be a little bit bluer than the other banks. I'm adding a smidge. You can see I'm just doing small amounts of color. That's the thing, a lot of times we feel like we don't have enough color when we have just tons and tons and tons. So I'm going to just build this bank, build this bank, push some of this up, 
try to remember that you don't want to repeat, repeat shapes. Nature does a lot of random stuff. That's why we can see so many pictures in the sky. And I'm just going to just scumble this in down here, get the dark color. You can see how the purple underneath really helps build that. We get some white it's just on the edges here. Let's make sure that we're just scumbling, scumbling. Just nice, random. See, I'm just keeping it super random. That's what to practice. That's what gets us in the clouds. Gets me, gets you, gets everybody. And add a little of this value here. Let's get quite light right here. Just on the corner of my brush now. Pressing it in. Okay. Rinse, rinse, rinse this out. All right, let's start getting those bright values that's going to make this landscape pop and blow our mind. Here's a weird tip. Dry the painting right now because purple and yellow are contrast colors. And when you want to have a bright pop on clouds, you don't want contrast to mix. You only want it when you're trying to gray it back. But when you're wanting it to really show like it's that incredible color you see from a plane, that's how you get that. So let's dry the painting. This last part, this is the juicy part. This is the part that feels really good. So be sure to take a deep breath. <sighs> be like, it's just art. And let's put all of that luscious sunlight all over these beautiful clouds. So I'm going to be working these three colors here pretty heavily. So one of the first things I'm going to do is I'm going to take my cad red light and my yellow and add just a smidge of the quinacridone. You may need and just this amount, look how, how small it is, this much purple, so we can layer up the bright color. See how that grayed out? That's what I mean, like it's gotta be dry, but you're gonna need a little bit of it so that you can put the bright brights on. So see how even though you grayed that out, it feels like a lot of yellow, but because you were in control of how much purple went into that mix, you're in control of the way that it grayed out. And that prevents some of the unexpected art results that people get that make them unhappy with their sunsets. And that's a lot of what we're doing in art is we're getting control of the unexpected result and playing into the results that we're looking to make. I'm gonna just, you can see I'm just back and forth with this. Ready, coming up the front, cause where's the sunlight hitting this cloud bank? Just coming in this under shoal, get more of this interesting, crazy color that you made. The troubleshooting here is to remember that if it's too grayed out, that was just too much purple in the mix. I'm going to add a little bit on the front of that little shoal of bank right there. Put some of this in these distant bits. You can even add a little far off. All right, now come on, get a little of the red and yellow. You haven't rinsed out your brush. Let's pop a bit. This is this small pop of color placed carefully. Think of it like hot sauce. That's what makes a difference, getting my, getting my red here. Look at that. Now we're, now we're cooking. That's like the hot sauce. That's the heat. That's the secret spice in your painting. That makes a painting just be like, wow, what is that? Something is attracting me to that. Now I'll tell you a little secret. The reason that I like to paint with real cadmium pigments is because of the way that they pop to the eye. But you don't have to do that. It's not necessary. Okay. Gonna put a little of this here. Oh yeah, let's this incredible color because what a day this is. Now, 
I'm gonna rinse, rinse, rinse out my brush. Loving this. I'm gonna get a little of my yellow and I'm gonna let some of the color I had mixed over here seep into it. This is a thing you'll see artists doing. And I'm gonna get some white. In just a couple places. I'm going to talk about a very bright, luminous cast of light. Not everywhere. Gentle with this. You be gentle with yours. Sometimes we get too rough with our paintings. It's in that that we lose their delicate and beautiful nature. Notice that I'm not taking away everything. Just just a little bit of this, just a little bit. Now let's put some sunlight in these closer banks. I can rinse out my brush again. I've got just a small amount of work to do to light this run of banks. And I wanna make sure that I feel like I have a distinctive bank here and a distinctive bank here. And that's gonna be about preserving a dark value between them. So let's keep that in mind while we're moving forward. Now remember in acrylic paint, can't really really mess up. That's not really how it works. If you make a mistake or you do something you don't like, dry it with your hair dryer, allow it to rest, and then go back and fix it. All right, so I'm getting a little bit of my magenta over here into this mix. It had some purple in it, but if you had lost your purple, you could just see how I'm just like, imagine this is like the ghost pepper. That's how much purple I'm adding. I'm treating it like the ghost pepper. And I'm gonna just put a little sunlight on these banks. Now your banks might not look exactly like my banks and that is super okay. Just so you know, we're not copy machines, we're artists. And we have to feel what's happening inside of us organically. I'm going to just add a little bank here. Just adding, oh, a little bank. I'm bringing here just some soft. We're just talking about this here, right? Just the front, oh, it's so lit. Let's soften this edge here, but not take away what? That purple, because that's how we were gonna hold this two spaces between these two things. Let's put our pop of color in. I'm gonna grab my, my red maybe. I'm gonna just add. Well, back here, leaving this bright orange that I mixed earlier, but I'm gonna add some of this dramatic, dramatic red. So fun to do. Let's get a little more of that here. You can see how mixing colors where you have a lot of orange and a lot of yellow is about knowing when to use those to play against each other, and when to keep them separated by drying the layers. Maybe I'll add a little bit right there, just to say, ooh, you're special. Special, special. When that's good, I like to just wipe off my brush on my highly personality pink towel, and I'm gonna come over to my yellow. It has very little pigment on it, but just enough to make sure there's harmony. Get my white again, and what am I gonna find? that sort of halo effect that we get in clouds sometimes. So, just make sure it's not too anything. And come here on the corner of my brush. Talk about that halo. Talking about that halo. It's okay if some of this slips back into another part of the bank, right? All right. Hopefully you have, we'll oh, create that little halo there. I really hope what's happening is that you're sort of surprising yourself with one, how something like this is built and how you could create it yourself at home if you just knew the layers and the steps. I hope this was really fun. I enjoyed spending time with you today. Be good to yourself, be good to each other, and I want to see you at the easel really soon. Bye-bye!